Hello and welcome to another episode of Train Sim World 2, where I'm doing my best to drive virtual locomotives without causing major disaster. Or do I? Anyway, before we begin, I'd like to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already and follow up with bell button to turn on the notifications and stay up to date with my latest content. I would also like to encourage you to join my Discord server, where you can interact with me and other Train Sim World fans, talk about the game in general, share some cool mods, or just chill. You can find link in description down below this video. Welcome back in another series. Uh, yes, this is basically another series uh, which will be incorporated into Train Sim World series uh, because I'm gonna keep them together, uh, I guess. Unless you guys would prefer them to be split up, I can then re rearrange things. Uh, this time we are going to take control over Mark 72 stock, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, following community vote, uh, we will be going into London Underground, Buckerloo Lane. And we are going to stay here for quite a while uh, because this this line seems to have three chapters <laughs> and quite a few services. So uh, this is going to be slightly different from what we've been doing previously. Uh, in previous series, we've been basically mastering the controls of uh, heavy trains, uh, all those shunting operations, all those um freight trains that that we've been running on sandpatch grade uh, now we have to forget about it for a while and we will be sticking to a strict timetable uh, that's the first difficulty of uh, london underground buckerloo line another difficulty is mastering the stops um, basically you have to stop at the right location in order to Pull an entire train or entire unit uh, into the length of the platform, uh, provide the best service for the passengers. And obviously, you need to do that fast enough so that you can keep with the timetable. Uh, the third difficulty of this line is obviously a weather, uh, because different weather conditions will affect our stopping distance uh, pretty greatly. Uh, at least I hope that the game simulates that properly. Um, at least developers claim that it is. So mastering that throughout this series will be very beneficial for us. Uh, and it might turn out to be really, really interesting practice. Uh, so. Uh, in first episodes, probably I will fail a lot. I'm not going to lie. Um, it takes some time to get used to this uh, particular unit. There's only one unit on this line, uh, so we'll be getting sick of driving it <laughs> at some point. Uh, but uh, I will try and do my best to, to drive it with as little in-game help as possible. So that's the personal challenge that I've set for myself. Uh, we will start from uh, the first mission in chapter one, which is 72 stock introduction. I did that mission before, long, long time ago. Uh, and that's gonna be the first episode of this uh, series, I guess. And then, we will keep on going mission by mission, trying to complete them as best as we can. Uh, so first few missions, I might see a little bit worse results than a gold medal. But by the end of the series, I am going to aim to get all gold medals. Uh, that's, that's at least the, the target of, of this series. Um, mostly because the line is very short. It's only 15 miles long or something. So getting through it uh, from one end to another shouldn't take more than half an hour, really. Even if you complete all the stops, 
there's not that much to it. it it's not that complicated line, uh, really. Um, but uh, mastering all those stops, learning how to operate the locomotive is the difficulty of this line. And that's the challenge uh, that, that we are going to go through. So sit down, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea or coffee, and we shall begin. Okay, so here we are, uh, London Underground Buckaloo Line, Chapter 1, uh, Introduction and Experience. That's what we are going to gain during this section. Uh, there is about eight missions that we need to complete. And hopefully, by the end of it, I will be able to more or less drive uh, this unit with some sort of precision. Chapter 2 is pretty much a normal day in the life of a driver of, of such train. So we will be seeing a lot of services that might be operating uh, along this line. Uh, mostly different connections between various different stations. And chapter 3 will get us into unusual duties. Uh, as you can see, I managed to finish one of those. Probably. Uh, that happened when I've been practicing during... Uh, during during one of the timetable missions, uh, for some reason, one of them might have been connected with uh, with one of the actual missions. That's why I got gold medal for it. Uh, but uh, there's still a lot of practice for me to take, uh, especially in terms of keeping or sticking to a timetable, which is a major difficulty in this game. And mostly because when you start the game, you should be ready to drive immediately. <laughs> and I, I'm i usually not. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'll be running blind during this mission. Uh, but as you can see, even though this is a very short, uh, short route, and there is only one unit on uh, operating on this uh, route, so we won't be seeing any other trains, uh, will be getting sick of that particular route. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Right. Uh, anyway, let's get back to chapter 1, 72 stock introduction, and let's jump into the game. Let's see what the game has to offer to us. Welcome to your first day on the Bakerloo line of the London Underground. Here you will be taken through a brief introduction on operating the 1972 tube stock that operate on this line. During this session, you'll be taken through the starter procedure, critical driving controls and passenger operations at several stations. Perfect. Head over to the indicated train and climb aboard to get started. Perfect, perfect. Uh, so, uh, we will have a good opportunity to actually learn how to drive one of those things. So let's jump in. Uh, probably that's the one. Oh, I can open the doors just like that. That's good. Uh, can I Take close seat them? Take in the driver's position. This is where you'll be spending most of your time. Really? Who would have guessed that a train driver would eventually spend a lot of time in the cab? Okay. So. Let's have a look. Uh, gauge lights. We might turn them on. Yeah, they are pretty good. Okay, let's take a seat. The control switch activates the train for operation. Okay, so there is a control switch. And it would be easier to switch it on when you stand up. There we go. 
Uh, it's it's really tough to determines the direction of travel. It's really tough to set up uh, this train, to be honest. Uh, not because it is so complicated. It's because the game doesn't really have the proper controls for it. Like, I put that switch on. And it's counterintuitive because you have to move the mouse in opposite direction to actually change this switch. It's, it's really hilarious. Anyway. Uh, control switch is on. Okay. Uh, now, uh, direction switch. There we go. And direction selector to enter. Okay. Perfect. This train features a combined power brake handle. Set this as indicated to begin the startup procedure. Okay. Set the traction brake control to emergency. Set the there we are. Indicated. Set the traction brake control to off and release. There we go. Audible warning reset button. Okay. Uh, set the traction brake control to rear one hold. The train is now ready to depart. Set the direction selector and apply power to begin moving. Okay. So, uh, then we move from inter uh, to four, okay. And on shunt position, yeah, we are able to move. Okay. Coasting is a method used to efficiently maintain speed and reduce Perfect. component stress and maintenance requirements. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So learning this is gonna be difficult. And as you can see, uh, the game decided to turn on a few things that I haven't turned on, really. It's probably the design of this mission, because normally I don't have those indicators on the ground. I also don't have this stopping marker. Uh, I just decided to turn this off. There we go. Take a quick glance of the platform to ensure all is safe before unlocking the doors. Yeah, I, I, I can totally see the platform from here. Okay. The question is... Do I actually get all those markers turned off in next mission? Okay. The train is now ready to depart. Set the direction selector and apply power to begin moving. Wait, direction selector is set. The next station on the line is Kilburn Park where we will perform a passenger stop. Really? Okay, okay. Uh, the thing is, about this route, I don't really know what the speed limits are, uh, which is very interesting, uh, because... Oh, okay, that's 35. Uh, that that explains a lot. Uh, I, I believe that that is a speed limit. I'm not sure what was the speed limit before, but the guy was saying something about 15 miles per hour. So I believe that was the speed limit. Apply a small amount of brake force to achieve a comfortable and safe stop. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So getting to feel the brakes is gonna be main difficulty of this route. Definitely. Uh, for now, I think I managed to do a pretty good job. But who knows? And we are stopped. Perfect. We can now open the doors, load the passengers. Okay, things seems to be working pretty fine so far. But that is just a tutorial. So I'm learning how to operate this train. I'm getting a lot of help. It's time to get going. The question is how I'm gonna handle this mission or how I'm gonna handle Proceed to the next stop at Maidavale unguided this time. This train see how you get on. Without any helpers. And that's gonna be the main thing about this particular route. Learning all those stops, uh, learning how to stop the train in proper places will definitely take some time for me to learn. But so far, yeah, operating the train itself uh, or operating this unit itself is not that tough. All we have to do is to stop at the right spot. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem too exciting when we are traveling inside the tube, isn't it? <laughs> it's only darkness. That's all we can see. I can turn on the blind. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I don't actually need it. Okay. We are doing 20 miles per hour, roughly. Ooh, we've overshot a little bit. Uh, not a bad thing, but definitely. Oh, I can't even use external camera now because we are inside the tunnel. Okay, okay. That is another difficulty of this particular mission. That concludes all mission. the basics of operating this train. Really? Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, let's see how we did. Did I get a gold medal? No, I, I didn't even get a medal. Oh my goodness me. They didn't even gave me a medal. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I've been speeding for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, so learning those speed limits is definitely going to be very important. So I went ooh, far above the speed limit here, according to the graph. And that's why I didn't get a medal. So as you can see, guys, uh, there is a lot of things to learn for me. Even though the train is quite simple in operation, uh, I shall get back to it and hopefully in next episode I will do much better. But for now, well, this is the first episode of Buckerloo Line. Uh, hopefully you will enjoy this series uh, as I will be practicing on how to get used to uh, driving this particular service. So guys, if you like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, that is definitely going to help my channel grow. I'm currently trying to get to 1000 subscribers. I'm very close. So I hope that uh, with this series, I will be able to achieve that. Uh, obviously, that's not the only series that I feature on my channel. So after you subscribe, consider turning on that bell button. Uh, it will 
let you know every time I will upload a new content or perhaps I will be streaming. Uh, I do stream uh, at least two games. Uh, perhaps there will be more. Uh, I, I'm trying to stream at least tr uh, twice a week and I'm trying to upload a video also twice a week. So there is quite a lot of content that I'm pushing out and hopefully you will enjoy it. Uh, on top of that, well, I strongly encourage you to join my Discord server where you can take part in some sort of decision-making uh, process about the channel. So whenever I'm struggling with a decision about what to do next when it comes to content, I will ask you guys what would you like to see. Uh, on top of that, well, you can discuss various different things about this and many other games that I play. Uh, find a new friend and perhaps, well, have a good time. Have a great day and I see you all later. Later. Out.